So, March 25th, 2010. That's probably a day in your life that you do not remember. But for me, I cannot forget that day. That day was my elementary school graduation, and in the morning, I was graduating from my elementary school, and at noon, my dad and I went out for lunch. And afterwards, I came back home, and my mom asked me if I wanted to go out with her, just two of us, um, for dinner. So I said, sure. I went outside, and outside there was a taxi waiting in front of our house. At first, I didn't know what was going on, but the next second, my mom pushed me into the taxi and told me that we were never going to come back home. She jumped in with me, and the taxi drove off. I was confused. I didn't know what was going on. So I screamed and yelled, stop the car, stop the car, stop the car, over and over and over. The taxi picked up my two brothers, and now my mother had three crying children in the taxi, all screaming for help. My two brothers, they asked my mother's questions like, were you taking us? and why, but she didn't answer any of those questions until we were too tired to cry any longer. In the silence, uh, she told us that we would be able to go home once we finished talking. About 30 minutes later, we arrived at a shelter, a woman's shelter, and there, a staff member came out and she took us to our new room, which we stayed out for the next two weeks. My typical day at the shelter was something like this. I would get up in the morning, and all of us, my brothers and my mom, would all eat breakfast. And after breakfast, my mom would take my two brothers to a children's room where they could um, play with toys and watch movies. But she would force me to go back with her to our room. And we would talk for the whole day. We would talk things about our dad and she would tell me that my dad is a horrible person, over and over. And I had two choices, to repeat after her or to get hit. The only um, break that I got was the 30 minute lunch break in between. And at night times, even, she would hide this icy recorder behind her back and question a sibling. Do you love mommy? And don't you think this is a nice place? My mother, she was a very caring mother in public. And everyone thought she was the nicest person ever. But at home, my dad knew, my brothers knew, and I knew that she was a cold-hearted monster. One day at the shelter, she um, came up to us siblings and asked us, well, told us that we were going to change our names now. And right now, my name is Aiko Hassan. But that was changed to I Tanaka. My two brothers, Noah Hassan and Kainan Hassan, were changed to Shu Tanaka and Kai Tanaka. And now they even have different names. And the two weeks, after the two weeks were over at the shelter, we moved to a new apartment. This apartment was two hours away from our original home. And there, my mom had to enroll us in new schools now. I was going into junior high school and my two brothers were enrolled into elementary schools. And there, my teacher story was that I was born in Shizuoka and we had moved from Shizuoka to Tokyo recently. And the reason I had brown hair and brown eyes was because my dad was a foreigner. This foreign dad that I had was extremely abusive towards us who was following us, trying to kidnap the kids. I knew this was all false, that my mom was just making this story up. But the principal and the two uh, teachers who were in the same room at the time, they believed it completely and told my mom that she had nothing to worry about because they were not going to let his father get to the kids. It was around this time that I started to notice my brother's transformations. For example, my nine-year-old brother, Noah, he uh, told my mom that he was going to find a way to get back home, his own. But, now this time, whenever I mentioned escape to him, 
who just wave it off, say that it's impossible. And my youngest brother, Kainan, he was six years old at the time. Now he would jump in front of cars and start yelling, let me die. I want to die. This six-year-old boy looked like he was having a mental breakdown, and I have never seen anything like it before. One day, I saw my mom go to the bathroom, and so I and I saw her purse hidden in the closet. So I ran into the purse, grabbed the coin, and then hid in my pocket. My mom came back from the bathroom seconds later, but she didn't notice anything. So the next day, after school was over, I took out my coin because I noticed that my mom was not home, and went outside the apartment to the public phone booth. And there I dropped in the coin, dial home. Nobody answered, but I left a message saying that I wanted to go home now, and I told where exactly we were. I was really surprised the next day when I saw my dad waiting in front of our school. It was, I haven't seen my dad in three weeks, so it was really emotional for me. We hugged, and despite how much I wanted to go home right then, we made plans to escape the next morning with my brothers. So I waved him goodbye and went back to the apartment. The next morning was a really cold, rainy morning and I remember packing my bag with clothes instead of books. And I left that apartment for the very last time. Now the plan was for me to get to my brothers before they got to the elementary school and tell them that our dad was waiting with a taxi at the corner and that we had a chance of escaping. So I did exactly that. I went up to them, uh, told them the plan, and my uh, nine-year-old brother Noah, he looked at me. He seemed really confused. He said, I said, what are you talking about? And then they ran into the school, not knowing what, ex what exactly was going on. So I walked back to the taxi, and my dad and I escaped. The day after, I went to search for my brothers, which I left yesterday. And I looked for them everywhere. I searched the apartment where we stayed at, but it was completely empty. They were gone again. It was a year after until I saw my nine-year-old brother Noah. Another two years until I saw my youngest brother, Kyle. But these encounters with them were very brief. I would wait in front of their school, and they would come out. So I would walk up to them, but they would try their best to avoid me. They would say things like, get away from me. You're not my sister. It was very hurtful, and I couldn't believe that they were acting like this, treating me like I was not part of their family anymore. And in the end, um, my mom, she had to pay several million yen in damages to my dad. This is what we call Ishado in Japanese. But still, she was able to successfully abduct two of my brothers. What I want to stress from this presentation are two points. One is that when you feel like you're in danger, you need to speak up. I know it's hard, especially when you're speaking up against someone as close as your own family. But sometimes, you just have to trust your own instincts. The second thing is that we are the future of Japan. So we can change this society into whatever we want. A society where, after divorce, fathers can see their own children, and mothers can see their own children, and brothers and sisters can see each other. That is a society that makes common sense. Thank you.